Hi everybody, welcome back to our USA Gold Roundtable. With me as always, Peter Grant and George Cooper. Thank you guys very much for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to talk about a couple things, but uh, one thing that's definitely been going on uh, recently, and obviously, is that the Dow is approaching 11,000, and gold is going up simultaneously, which uh, has led a lot of people to uh, start saying economic recovery. But uh, when everything starts going up together, it leads you to a little bit different conclusion. Uh, maybe there's an you know, inflationary pressure playing a role in that economic recovery. And uh, so you know, let's talk a little bit about that. What's going on? Yeah, you know, I, th I think you're right. I think you see the, the Dow up to 11,000, and I think people all too often uh, mistakenly uh, view the stock market and the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average largely as, uh, as the overall barometer of, of the economy. And, right. and I, I think it's ill-advised um, because, it, you know, if you pump enough money into the system, um, things are going to go up. Right. Uh, and, and the stock market is a prime example of that. But we're seeing a lot of things go up. Oil prices uh, at new 17, 18 month highs. Uh, uh, gold, um, you know, within $50 of its, uh, uh, of its all, $75 of its all time high. Um, all of the industrial metal, metals, copper, copper palladium, platinum, zinc, um, all uh, at, at um, 18 to 22 month highs. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on the upside across a wide spectrum of asset classes. Um, and at the same time, the U.S. economy, um, you know, if you look at kind of the more traditional gauges, and you can argue that they're lagging indicators frequently, but I mean, the most obvious one is the unemployment rate, you know, still at 9.7% uh, after March non-farm payrolls came out this week, uh, or, or late last week. And, and again, you know, that, that's a very grim number. If you look at the broader U6 measure of un and underemployment, um, it's seven, about 17 uh, percent. So again, um, you know, it, it does not bode well for a sustained, a true economic recovery. And then the other thing I would point out is uh, one of the more disturbing charts that I saw recently uh, is the St. Louis Fed's um, civilian employment to population ratio. And it's basically tanked in the last several years uh, from a high of, uh, of about 65%. 65% of the entire population working uh, to about 58%. Now, the, the, the lows of the series from the late 1940s um, is around 55%. And we had huge gains in the 70s and 80s as um, uh, women uh, entered the workforce in mass. Um, a lot of that has already been retraced. And it's a combination of the very high unemployment rate currently and the aging of the population the, as the baby boomers uh, retire and, uh, and start um, collecting Social Security and so forth. I mean, it's a, it's a very depressing chart um, in, in terms of people participating in the economy and working and those who have kind of passed that and are um, uh, either by choice or, uh, or not. Um, not working, right. and so again, it, it it makes the case for for a sustained economic recovery difficult to justify. It's a, well, and it's it's hard to I mean, when you and even to have true GDP sustainability when you don't have a large part of the population working. Correct. And so it seems like they're really trying to squeeze good information mm -hmm. out of traditional areas um, in order to maybe buoy what we're seeing in equities as as you know, defined as an economic recovery. This whole thing reminds me of the 1970s and the Jimmy Carter years. We had the Vietnam War and the aftermath of the war, <clears throat> which essentially is what we have now. We've got two wars. And the, suspending, uh, the spending on those wars is much more than it was in the Vietnam aftermath. And we had uh, oil prices uh, rise, uh, what, about fourfold, fivefold. The high was $36 back in 1980. Gold went from a low of 35, where it had been controlled for many years to a high of 850. And so it was actually suppressed for a long time uh, because it was on the gold standard. And it was illegal for Americans to own it up until 1975. But um, as, they, as they're saying in the business, a rising tide lifts all boats. So we're seeing the value of all commodities rise. Um, we're seeing an economic recovery in Asia. China and India are now continuing to, to, to uh, bolster their economies. Uh, Chinese growth is uh, running around 11%. And they've raised their reserve rates to to damp it down, to try to get down to about 8%. So the demand for the physical metals and the, just the, the foodstuffs is starting to rise. So we're seeing those things, plus um, the, um, uh, I don't know if you saw the story, but the price of iron ore doubled last week. And it had been uh, artificially suppressed through uh, long-term contractual arrangements. 
and the miners finally said, we're not going to do this anymore. The price is now this. So it basically doubled overnight. And the steel companies have announced a 33% increase in the price of steel for this year. And just imagine how many things are made out of steel. Uh, not just cars, I mean, just most things. That's amazing. So we're going to see these things filter through. It's going to start showing up in the producer price index first, and it'll eventually make it to the CPI probably later in the third, fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that what you're really uh, hinting at or getting at is that inflation, you know, the way it, it kind of works its way through everything, that every part of our everyday lives, it ends up being very contradictory to any kind of growth pattern, you know, any kind of fundamental long-term growth because it erodes at it, it eats at it. But what you have is in the initial stages when you do pump all of this money in, you know, trillions of dollars to get things going again, I mean, things are going to look good for a period of time. But what you ultimately do is, is just forestall the inevitable. But yet in terms of gold, gold's rising and the Dow Gold Ratio actually is in favor of gold, so it's, it's, it's declining. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, it's just a representation of the purchasing power of, of the dollar. Right. Yeah. I'd be very concerned about breaking out the champagne at Dow 11,000, which I agree though, people are very you know, excited about it. It's a, it's a mark and it's meaningful. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we I actually had a similar conversation in a video when gold hit 10,000, or I mean, excuse me, when the Dow hit 10,000. But you know, I, I always look back to the, the stock crash in 1929. And, it, and actually there are a number of parallels to what's going on now. Granted, we haven't had the subsequent decline in the stock market, but in 1929, when stocks collapsed, they rallied about 55% from the lows. And it wasn't really the 29 crash that got everybody. It was the crash from 31 to 33. They say the first crash wiped out the speculators, and the second crash wiped out the rest of the country. Right. And so you look at what's going on, you look at, I mean, you throw $2 trillion or something, things are going to go up, and it, you start to wonder how sustainable that is. I mean, PE ratios are as bad as they were in the 90s during the tech bubble. So how, how is this sustainable? It, it doesn't make sense. Well. It, you know, there, it remains to be seen, certainly. Um, but a, again, a lot of things. Have, uh, there are a lot of parallels with what happened in the late twenties, early nineteen thirties. Um, certainly, we didn't have the ability to throw two trillion dollars <laughs> at the economy yeah, back then we're on gold uh, because because we were on the gold standard. Um, but uh, today, you know, interest rates remain very low. Uh, but the government is starting to remove some of the accommodations in terms of quantitative easing and so forth. Um, and and we're, we're seeing the results of that. Interest rates are creeping up, mortgage rates are creeping up. Um, and, and in talking about what's going up and what's uh, you know, uh, uh, not faring so well, it's important to remember that, that one of the, the primary uh, causes of the financial crisis, real estate, uh, both residential and commercial, is not recovering. Uh, in line with uh, with some of the other indicators, um, so bear that in mind uh, along with the the high unemployment rate and uh, uh, and again, yeah, well, I think you you've got reason to be very concerned. Well, guys, I think that that's that'll probably do we, it. We okay. covered a lot of ground. Yeah, that was good. That was great. Yeah. Uh, one thing, real quick, that I want to say is that we have here a uh, a new booklet that we're just releasing. Um, a lot of our clients invest in pre nineteen thirty three gold coins. And um, it's, it, they do so because of the inherent advantages of that type of ownership as far as protecting against government intervention. And uh, we've just finished this booklet, which basically goes through all the different coins that are available from that genre, um, you know, rationale for that ownership. If you already own these coins or if you're interested in learning more about them, highly recommend you pick one of these up. Just send us an email with your name and address at admin at usagold.com. We'll send that off to you. Uh, but for now, I'm Jonathan Casares. I'm Peter Grant. And George Cooper. Stay in touch with the broker.